Good morning guys, good morning internet, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to take a look at and of course talk about, uh, you know, so we could learn a thing or two, but yeah, here we are again. Um, this time we're doing a real time video, um, so yeah, and... <laughs> I just realized what time this would be by the time I published this. It's very close to Christmas. And I'm glad that I got the chance to do this extra videos for my last year's updates, basically. Um, the channel started in August 2013. That was like when I first joined YouTube, but I, I didn't post until about two years ago on December. And so I guess to just kind of commemorate that very first set of videos that I released, I decided that, you know, <laughs> this Christmas I'll be adding some extra videos on my roster of updates. So yeah, we get two new cool updates for Christmas. Yay! Uh, so that's one good news. And then the other news that is very amazing is the fact that I'm showing you a video of an artwork process that is so not my style. <laughs> this is absolutely <laughs> not my style at all. Um, but I wanted to experiment, you know, and I wanted to try some things out. And for the most part, it was fairly successful. Uh, I, I really loved the result. Uh, I thought the result was great. So, yeah. But anyways, um, I guess we should start really talking about what is going on in the process. Because, yeah, that's what we typically talk about in my videos. So, um, okay, so the style and technique that I'm referring to that I typically don't do is this technique, which this particular technique is heavy with the lasso and selection tools and not only you know does this technique require that a lot it also requires a use of a lot of texture brushes um just to kind of create uh, fake details basically um my typical routine in my typical workflow is that i paint everything in one layer and I do a lot of blending because I like my blending. Um, I like my color transitions and I typically just use one or two brushes. Uh, I do use a textured brush in my regular workflow, but just typically just one textured brush. And then for the most part, I just use a simple blending, um, not blending brush, but just a regular uh, brush that kind of emulates uh, blending between colors and whatnot or it has like a blending um capability set to it <laughs> why can i not think today oh <laughs> wow okay it's early in the morning when i'm doing this recording so yeah maybe that's why but um so yeah in my typical technique i just basically do everything in one layer and I just basically use one or two brushes. I don't use multiple brushes and I don't really use the selection tool that much. I typically just paint everything as if you traditionally paint. Um, I guess that's the best way of me explaining it. Uh, typically when you traditionally paint you stick to like one or two brushes and you do the blending on canvas. That's typically what I do. Um, and when you want to paint textures you literally hand paint textures. Um, with this technique, this is very cool um, because with the textured brushes that you're typically using, you kind of cut the work in half, by, kind of, basically. Um, a lot of people think this is like a really fast method of working, and it is for the most part, but you also kind of know how to work with it, you know? Um, which me, I don't, I don't work with it very well. Um, and the other thing with this technique too, um, that I forgot to mention is that this technique also requires a, a, the use of a lot of layers. Um, 
typically when you work this way you try to typically do try to save your layers as much but in this particular case i just put everything in one layer just because <laughs> i wanted the simplicity of just that one layer so yeah but anyways um why do i not use this technique um I like my traditional method of painting and the way I paint typically is like the, the traditional method where you just kind of do all your blending and mixing and detailing all in one canvas with one or two brushes, you know, not a whole lot of switching around. This one is kind of like technical uh, in thinking. You kind of have to carefully think things out before um, executing your artistic or creative decision and i think there's a reason why i like the other style better because it flows better you can be basically just in the flow and just going and you know well with this one it's like you kind of have to think think things through and um yeah just basically be a lot more logical i guess um although some artists who are really good with this technique they flow with this technique very well so yeah but enough about this technique and all the differences between this technique and what I typically do. I guess now is a great time for me to really start talking about the process and what the te technique entails. So at the very beginning, I obviously did the background, which is the background is basically this gray metal looking table. And the way I would have typically done it before is that I would have just painted all the grays, but obviously I use some textured brushes and the textured brushes kind of give this effect of making it look like there's something else there on the table. So that's really cool. But yeah, I laid down all this grays on the background. And then after that, I obviously did a selection tool for the two plates slash two bowls. I'm not even really sure if I meant this dish to be a bowl or to be a plate. Um, I was using a reference for this particular image, multiple references. In fact, um, the main reference that I use basically, um, kind of copied like the the lighting scheme and the spoon and the placement of the plates so like that was like the main reference i use but when it comes to the food i heavily heavily relied on like other references um and actually i think the background is slightly different from the original photo too i, I cannot for the life of me remember where the reference was um but anyways in the original photo it was just regular plates but as soon as i ended up doing all this garnish onto the food it ended up kind of looking more like it's a soup um so yeah but anyways so basically i you know made a circle selection to denote the plate slash bowl and then obviously i did another selection for the inside of the dish and then as soon as I made that selection, I used the brown color to fill it in with color. I or I used a bucket tool to fill it in with brown color. And then after that, I did this green garnish. Um, I think it's a fluffy cloud texture was what I used for it. Um, it's supposed to denote some form of vegetable. Um, so I just basically put all of that on top of the brown and then slowly and surely i started cutting up shapes um to basically denote pieces of ingredients um and this is where i was like looking back and forth at different references you know um i think for the green my inspiration was av avocados so there's like the dark greenish that kind of looks like parsley or something and then there's the light green that kind of looks like avocados um, and then this one I'm about to make is chicken. Um, so basically I, I did a bunch of rectangles and then after that I made some more rectangles because I wanted to give the impression that it's grilled chicken, um, which is what I'm about to do. But yeah, this technique is just very heavy with the selection tool. Um, you just kind of 
just select random pieces and just you know with one or two brush strokes you know lay down your colors just to kind of indicate you know what it is that you're trying to portray uh, it's so unlike my style again like with my style it, it flows a lot better for me because I could just keep going keep going with this one is you know basically I had to pause rethink what am I trying to accomplish what shape am I trying to accomplish and how am I going to accomplish that with the selection tools so um, the overall technique even though it's fast um, the process it feels so much slower um, but again you know it's just a different style a different technique I mean I could work with this style okay if a particular client wants me to work in this style and this is what they're like you know and it's always kind of nice and refreshing to just step out of your comfort zone and just try something new you know but um, yeah for for a technique that I don't do often, you know, I was really just impressed with this result. So yeah, but a lot of this technique is just rinse and repeat. Uh, for any little piece of garnish that I was gonna put in the food, I would just basically make a selection and do one or two brush strokes, um, just to kind of indicate what that you know particular garnish is. Um, so again, like I said, this one is like chicken, you know, grilled chicken. And you can tell, oh, yeah, it, it is grilled chicken because there's that brownish, darkish spots on the chicken that kind of indicates where it touched the metal part, you know, where it was cooking. So, yeah. But yeah, a lot of this is just rinse and repeat, you know, make a selection, do one or two brush strokes. And yeah, very simple technique, very cool technique. I do love working this this way. And I do combine some of the techniques from from this style of painting with my other stuff too. Like I recently started using the selection tool a lot more um, compared to my traditional or compared to my typical way of painting. Um, not quite as often as I, I or not quite as much as I did with this one because I mean literally you see me use the selection tool like the whole time. But um, yeah, it's like immensely refreshing to try a totally different unique style and just see where things go.
So I wasn't very happy with the way the shadows was looking and I was having a hard time making like the selection to where the shadows was going to go so I decided that I was just going to use my typical uh, chalk brush that I use um, and put it on multiply uh, just to kind of accentuate my shadows basically so I switched back to my standard set of brushes you could see it to the right it says ej faves uh those are my favorite brushes and just selected the chalk brush and just kind of put it on multiply just so that i could add some shadows and i pretty much did this all the way throughout the dish um, just to kind of indicate what where the light is coming from and you know i sent away the shadows kind of just make it look 3d basically um, you can see with the peppers, um, I think it's peppers, I'm not <laughs> exactly sure what this food garnish is, or ingredient. Um, but yeah, and they look more 3D now that the shadows are added. And yeah, I just started doing this all throughout all the ingredients that are put on top of the sloop, soup slash dish. Yeah, it's a very unique way of totally working. I can say that for sure. Um, but as we can see, I absolutely love my working working with just one or two brushes. It just feels so much more flowy. The biggest irony about this particular style though is that when, when I see this particular style executed very well, I'm always in awe of the people um, when they pull this off so nicely because it's, it's a difficult technique to really nail down. Um, I mean, in my case, the only reason why my particular image turned out great for the most part is simply because of the fact that I was using references. Um, but for people who just draw straight from imagination, it's it's really unique that they could, you know, they see their vision in the head so well, you know, that they could just make a selection out of the things that they're seeing in their head. Um, Ati Gailin is really good with it. Um, I've mentioned all this artists before. Really great lasso artist, Ati Gailin, Jordan Grimmer. Um, Dominic Mayer, he has a video uh, on YouTube that just blows my mind when he made when he made it and recorded it. Um, I forgot what the title of the piece was, but you know, I basically there was an elephant in the scene, right? And I just saw him just freehand this elephant with the selection tool <laughs> and i was like wow you know because the the thing with this selection tool especially when you freehand like objects and shapes with the freehand is it basically almost kind of works like a pen whatever strokes you're making is like final essentially you know so in my case i like to kind of sketch things out you know just to give me a feel of the shape first and then I come back with like a definitive line with the lasso tool. It pretty much acts like a definitive line. Like it's just one line. I mean, you can see, you can see me struggle with the spoon right now. Like I'm trying to figure out like where the spoon is going to go. Like, is it going to go farther down to the bottom or like farther to the right? I was like trying to figure out like the angle of it, you know, and you could tell that I was having such a hard time. And you could also tell that I actually didn't, sex I wasn't very successful at creating the shape. Because if you look at the top of the spoon or the top of that brown area, you can see that there's, it's not straight at all. And you could tell that I kind of gave up making this perfect shape of the spoon. 
I, I think I was trying to do like a curve on top or something and then it just ended up just like a wonky <laughs> triangle or something so yeah it's it's a very hard technique to kind of pull off because it just pretty much just works like a pen you you kind of have to know where you're going to put your lines um without even seeing it so yeah for dominic mayer to be able to just freehand a selection of the elephant i was like wow yeah that's a really good visual brain right there you know he, he sees something in his head and he's able to execute it while me my visuals in my head are sometimes fuzzy where it's like i kind of had to like sketch things out just to get an idea of where things are going to be and then as soon as i see something on paper then i'm like oh yeah okay i could run with something so yeah but it's a it's an exercise you know out of my standard style it's absolutely fun and absolutely unique to to try this very very unique style so yeah i just absolutely had to choose this speed paint for my extra last year updates just because of the unique nature of it so yeah but this is it folks this is the end of the illustration uh a great example of the lasso technique with the exception of me not using layers because typically people use layers with this technique but yeah there it is all right thank you guys for watching this with me catch the next video um i should update that next video at the same time i'm updating this video or i'm putting this up or making it public and whatnot so yeah go watch that other video and thanks for watching good night